Hey guys, this is Michael here. I'm a longtime user of Windows Phone and of the Windows Phone subreddit on the Read It app. And there's been a lot of talk lately about new features in Windows Phone 10 and old features either being changed or removed from Windows Phone 7. So what I have is a second generation Windows Phone 7 phone running on a single core 1.4 gigahertz processor. A Lumia 920 running Windows Phone 10 that's dual core 1.4 and the Lumia 1520 with its quad core either 1.4 or 1.7 gigahertz. Don't quite remember which. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through uh, a few of the apps and get a gauge of the app experience, uh, the speed of the OS, and uh, some of the uh, design considerations within the apps. So let's start with the People app. And we'll wait for the 920 to finish loading. We'll swipe over to the What's New screen. And one of the differences between 10 and 8 versus 7 is that in 10 and 8, if you want to interact with a post, you actually do it through the app that the post came from. For example, Facebook or Twitter, whereas in Windows Phone 7, it's all directly integrated in the app and it's much quicker. And also, if you wanted to share content, you could send it to Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or whatever of your other social media sites that you wanted to all at the same time. I'm having a little trouble with my touch gestures. So we still have our groups here in the uh, People apps. And one of the features of the groups is, as you know, you get your posts from a bunch of people that you you know, put in this group, almost like a favorite list. But with Windows Phone 10, it appears that it's going to be handled mainly through the Group Me app. Now, one thing Windows Phone 7 had that 8 and 10 do not is Family Room, which is kind of like a group up for your, you know, of course, more for your family where you can share messages, emails, photos, calendars, that sort of thing. Uh, that's kind of uh, gone the way of the dodo and it's supposed to be replaced with the Group Me chat app. Now one thing I have noticed in 10 is that we don't yet seem to have uh, any Facebook content. I'm not sure if uh, it's either going to be implemented or if I may have missed something in the setup. So let's talk about messaging. Now with Windows Phone 7 the messaging had built-in Facebook messaging so you could actually switch within the same thread between Facebook and text messaging with Windows Phone 10 that will be handled uh, by Skype and Windows Phone 8 is just SMS only. So let's see we can send on I am text. Actually how do you switch? Oh okay so I have to invite that person to Skype whereas for Windows Phone 7 if you wanted to switch let's see oh, it's not on here because it's a read-only message but you could actually switch down here and it would tell you up here whether you're on Facebook or SMS. All right, so let's check out email. All right, waiting for the Outlook app to come up. And let's take a look at let's see, the Microsoft Work and Play email that I recently got from them. So they all render pretty well and with pretty good speed. One thing I did notice is that the Windows Phone 10 Outlook does render that content a little differently. And also the first time this email was loaded, it loaded the pictures automatically, whereas I had to press a button on the other two in order to download the actual content. Uh, for the most part, the apps remain the same, except you get swipe to delete or flag. Whereas in Windows Phone 7 and 8, it's more of either tap and hold or the touch gesture on the side, although you still get the multi-select gesture in the new Outlook app. So overall, the uh, three phones seem to be performing pretty well. Let's check out the Zoom Music app. Now you notice that the live tile is still going even though I do not have content playing. Whereas in Windows Phone 8 1, the live tile only plays when you actually have music playing in the background. So let's check out their startup times. 
So even though we have the lower hardware, the Windows Phone 7 phone actually finished first. So let's check out some music and let's take a look at the artist pages. Go. So the design and the UI is a bit different. So here we have songs. It hadn't really changed a whole lot between 7 and 8. And if you want new content from the marketplace, it's down at the bottom. So let's try with some content that's not on the phone. Where's the latest album? I guess it's here. Where's the marketplace albums? I'm not too sure where that is. All right, so what I'll do is I'll just uh, play the radio for all of them. So here in Windows Phone 7, we had Smart DJ, which was like radio, but it could actually select songs from your local music if you didn't have an internet connection or a subscription service to Windows Music. So let's check out the radio. And Windows Phone 7 started first. Windows Phone 10 second. And Windows Phone 8 is still waiting. So I'm not going to wait for that. Alright, so that's just a general feel for it. And this uh, isn't supposed, isn't intended to be a high, uh, a low level review, just kind of a high level over all the app, you know, just the speed and the features. So let's check out video. Now on Windows Phone 8, it's also in the Zune app. So go Zune, music, video. And I don't have anything on the Windows Phone 7. It does have like wireless syncing to your desktop, but I never set that up. And see just slight changes between uh, you know the two apps and Windows Phone 8 it's not bad it's uh you know pretty speedy now I would like to point out that this is not a Windows Phone 8 one app this is a Windows Phone 8 app and you can tell just by the font sizes and the overall styling of the app itself so it was actually compiled for Windows Phone 8.0 not for 8.1 all right so we'll do podcasts again in the Zune app Podcast, ready to go. There we go. So check out. And they all seem to be pretty good and pretty speedy for this at what they're doing. And it's pretty basic. Uh, let's see. Now we'll check out the browsers. Check out the browser speed. So we'll go IE, Edge, and IE. And, oh, that was probably a post that I accidentally clicked on. There we go, we'll go for the Lumia 550 review. Uh, where's, do we have, oh, there's history, okay. Let's go earlier today, Lumia 550. And I'll go ahead and refresh this one. I'd actually restarted all the phones, but it looked like the browser actually saved my run through when I was going through the um, reading mode. So let's check out our scrolling between them. And this is a pretty heavy site. So it's I'm actually on Windows Phone Central, but uh, the JavaScript and the ads take a pretty good hit, which is why we really love reading mode if I can get it. Reading mode. Reading mode. Oh, okay, I couldn't do it before. Now it's now it's eligible. Still waiting for a Windows Phone 8 to be able to do reading mode. Okay, Windows Phone 10 has it. Looks like Windows Phone 8 is uh, still stuck on some JavaScript rendering or something. And Windows Phone 7 does not have that feature. All right. Well, okay. there it is. Okay, there we go. So it took Windows Phone 8, it took longer to be able to run the reading view, but it loaded quicker, possibly due to the processor. And Windows Phone 10, we had quicker access to it. All right, so let's check out the Xbox app. So, 
We still have our little, uh, we still have our avatars. We got our profiles, our achievements. Still waiting on Windows 10. So by now we could have probably sent a message to our friends by the time Windows 10 loaded. Final Fantasy 3, yay. But it's a quick overview of the apps and Windows Phone 10 navigation is probably handled, primarily handled by the hamburger menu. And now let's take a look at the legendary settings app in Windows Phone. So these two were the quickest. Now one thing I'd like to point out about the settings app is that in Windows Phone 7, you had the list because it really wasn't that long, which is why it wasn't grouped. Whereas in Windows Phone 8, we go and we go and we go. And in Windows Phone 10, they were finally grouped. Now, some of you are lucky to have lucky enough to have Windows Phone 8.2, which groups them, which was pretty nice. But in Windows Phone 10, you get the search settings for, well, settings. And just a, a general app will open up your favorite. Read it. Now the Lumia 1520 is really rocking through this quite nicely. And if we load up the post, I notice that in the Windows Phone 7 version this video does not play. But the Windows Phone 7 version actually handles comments quite nicely. So let's, while that's loading, we'll go ahead and scroll. Now I'm not sure if the rendering for the scrolling is due to the new controls in Windows 10, or if it's just the Lumia 920's processor, probably has a good bit to do with it. And the 1520 is doing a really, really good job of keeping up with it. Now surprisingly, uh, Windows Phone 7, considering it only has a single core processor, actually does pretty well. Uh, you can see it occasionally where it occasionally gets stuck on the UI, possibly waiting for an operation to complete or waiting for the rendering to finish. But overall, it actually performs pretty well. So there you have it. That's a, a quick overview of some of the features of Windows Phone 7.8, 8.1, and Windows Phone 10. Uh, personally, I really like the overall design and consistency of Windows Phone 7.8. Windows Phone 10 does have some good speed boosts and good features and new controls. And Windows Phone 8.1 also brought us a lot of new features, uh, swiping, Cortana, and a lot of other things that we like. So overall, they were all great phones, and it's pretty surprising how a phone that is this old still handles and runs and feels like it's a pretty new phone. Only difference is a lot of the services that came with it are now turned off, so you can't really use them. But Tell me guys what you think and uh, leave, a, leave a comment.